Now Sam Ellinger, quarterback at the University of Texas, joins us here. And, and Sam, first of all, thank you for joining us. And, and second of all, wild comeback last week in Lubbock. You guys, uh, I tell you what, that last, what, three minutes or so was crazy. Take us into the huddle on the sideline. Were you guys panicked at any point or, or pretty calm that you thought you could come back? You know, Joel, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, we really weren't. Uh, we were very calm. And it was almost like we, we didn't really believe that we were going to lose the game. And so we kept, we kept telling ourselves, you know, we're still going to win this game. We're still going to win this game. And uh, with about three minutes, we ended up, <laughs> ended up turning it on there at the end and uh, came back. I'm just very thankful we walked out of there with a win. Well, and, and, you know, I think to a large degree, you guys can take this as a huge positive because in past years, in particular when the defense wasn't playing well, you know, maybe that went the other direction, but th this was different. Um, wh why is this team different, maybe from a leadership standpoint, uh, in terms of, you know, approaching a game like that or a situation like that and, and reversing an outcome from past years? No doubt. I think uh, the pa past few years, if we had gotten in that position, uh, there's a, a low likelihood that we would have found ourselves on the other side of it and, and where we are today. But um, yeah, I think I think to answer your question, it has a lot to do with the leadership that we have. A lot of guys have more experience, uh, older guys. Obviously, we got seven, eight guys back on defense and around there on offense as well and, and good leaders on both sides of the ball. So just just continued experience and leadership as we continue to work on that uh, to, to keep our guys going regardless of what's going on. Weird off season for everybody, and everybody that I talk to says the same thing. Hey, I wish I had a really experienced quarterback coming back. Well, you guys do, right? And and Coach Herman even and I talked about that uh, over the course of the summer. But you do have a new offensive coordinator, so Mike Yurchich comes in as your offensive coordinator. How different is your system, if at all, and how has he helped you uh, so far here in your last season in Austin? Yeah, I would say I would say the system. It, it, there's there's a lot of new schemes, um, a lot of new concepts in the past game. Uh, obviously, you, you got pretty traditional uh, formations that are going to be uniform across most offenses, uh, but definitely some new terminology. And uh, I, I've really enjoyed getting to know him. Uh, he's very professional. Love the way that he conducts business and, and leads the offense. Uh, very attentive to detail, and so I'm continuing to. You know, develop in his system, and and I think everybody on the offense loves playing for him. What what can we expect from your wide receiver core? You know, because it at least on paper it looked like you guys were going to be a bit inexperienced. Devin Duvernay is is no longer there. By the way, wild kick return, how fast he was on Monday Night Football. I'm sure you were psyched to see that. But uh, you do get Tariq Black in. You know, when you look around at your wide receiver core. T tell me what you have trust in and, and what you like on the outside. Yeah, we have a, a lot of really talented guys, um, a lot of athleticism out on the perimeter. And so there's five, six, seven guys that have a chance every Saturday to uh, make big plays. And so I feel very comfortable with those guys. Um, you know, building, building the chemistry is a, a work in progress, and we're continuing to do that um, to solidify, you know, one or two guys. You know, the last two years it's been Devin and Colin and Lil Jordan and things like that. So it's, it's more uh, by committee this year so far. Um, but there's a, a ton of talent in that room, and, and every guy has, has an opportunity every Saturday to, to have a big day. So this week, uh, Gus and I and Ginny heading down to Austin. Can't wait to see you guys play in person. Uh, but you get TCU, and it's a defense that you struggled with last year. It was probably your worst performance uh, of the year. What did you learn from that, and, and what do you hope to, to take forward into this game to maybe correct that? Yeah, Coach Patterson and uh, the TCU defense, they always are extremely well prepared. Um, you know, they, they do a great job of, of forcing the offense into um, tricky situations. And so it's always, we're going to have our hands full. They always um, present a challenge to offenses. So looking forward to uh, continuing to develop within this offense. Obviously, we're going to um, have practice today and, and continue to get better and focus on, on continuing to get better. But uh, we will definitely have our hands full, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, listen, I got to know your family a little bit, came down and did a feature on you last year and, and, and we went to your family home. So my best to your family, but what do they have prepared for you for tomorrow, which is your birthday? Happy early birthday to Sam Ellinger. Uh, yeah, man. What, what do you got on the docket this week and a big birthday week? Well, I appreciate it. 
Uh, I, I actually, because I know our weeks are going to be so crazy and, and tomorrow will be so crazy with practice. I actually have an exam tomorrow as well. Oh. I got to go back home last night and have dinner with the family and kind of have a little birthday celebration then. So we got it out of the way. Uh, I love it, man. A test on your birthday. That ain't right. That ain't right. I know it. I know it. It's all good, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, listen, keep up the quality play. You've, you've been playing amazing. Ten touchdowns so far on the season. Coming up uh, in a little bit, I'm going to break down those last couple of concepts that you guys had in order to tie the game and then, or excuse me, to score the touchdown and then the two-point conversion to tie the game. So. From, from your point of view, before I talk about them, take me through those two last concepts here as, as uh, we finish up, and, and what were you seeing? Which, which last two? Uh, the, the touchdown to bring you within two, and then the two-point conversion, so regulation. Yeah, the, we work a lot of tempo situations, um, and that, that last play, the touchdown to Brennan Eagles, um, that, was, that was one that we had been working quite a bit. The inside receivers kind of run up, to the goal line and sit. If they don't get the ball, they work out to try to bring that that uh, uh, hook, curl, flat defender out. And then we have outside digs running through the, the back back line of the end zone on the outside. So we're, we're trying to put the ball in the back line and um, space it out with the inside guys and then wrap inside. And Caden uh, Brennan did a great job of executing that um, up top. And then the two-point play, that was a play that, that we've had in. We actually got it from West Virginia. They ran it against us two years ago. I was going to say, that's the exact play that West Virginia beat you guys with two years ago. Yeah, it was a great, great play design, so we decided to steal it. Uh, we, ran it we ran it in the Sugar Bowl, and then we also ran it last year against Oklahoma State. Different variations, that's the cool thing about it. And uh, we came up to the line, and we, we knew we were probably going to get man coverage, cover zero. They like to bring that in pressure situations. And I, we said, hey, Brennan, what do you want to run? You want to run a fade or you want to run a slant? And he had one-on-one -on -one coverage, and he's like, I want to run a slant. So it sound, sounds good. So I came up to the line at first. They had they had uh, two linebackers over there, and I didn't know if they were going to be coming or not. And I was about to signal fade. I'm glad I didn't because I saw their demeanor and knew they were going to be blitzing, and we'd have that window right behind them. So he ran a great slant route, and, and it came open, and we were able to tie it up there at the end. I love it. I love talking ball. Hey, Sam, uh, always great chatting with you. Best of luck this week, and uh, we'll see you down there in Austin. Start your Saturday strong at 10 Eastern with a legendary college football lineup on the Big Noon Kickoff Show. Big Noon Kickoff on Fox.